Alright, alright. Good afternoon, folks. Uh, I think it's about that time. We can go ahead and get started. We got a uh, good group of folks here coming in. Welcome, welcome. Good afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Jacob Bukowski, and I'm a senior elite applications here at Go Engineer. Uh, I'm your local Southern California Santa Ana application engineer, and Bruce, who's also a senior elite applications engineer, is your local Central SoCal uh, application engineer. Uh, he's also on this call. Go ahead and say what's what's up, Bruce. Hey, how you doing, guys? All right. He's going to be in the background here, filling out, uh, helping answer out any questions that you guys have. Please feel free to send them uh, in the questions box or uh, in the chat as well, uh, and we'll go ahead and get, and get to them. Uh, <clears throat> myself, Jacob, I'm from City of Brotherly Love in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's where I got my undergrad and Bachelor's of Science in Mechanical Engineering at Temple University. I worked in a variety of industries, all utilizing SOLIDWORKS before uh, being a go-engineer over five years now. Um, hey Bruce, uh, how, how long have you been with Go Engineer? Uh, 12 years at Go Engineer, and I've been working with SolidWorks since it came out in 95. Oh, very cool. All right. Yeah, so we, we, as you can see here, we got the, uh, training and resources that you, uh, that you need to get what you need to get done. Uh, so Go, Go Engineer, we're at Go Engineer here. Uh, we're your one-stop design shop for reverse engineering, 3D printing, uh, the full SOLIDWORKS computer-aided design suite, including CAM, Composer, product data management, simulation tools. Uh, we have uh, paid training with half classroom capacity in person starting next month, and instructor-led training online as well, and as, as well as a suite of all of our free training available, such as our knowledge base on our website, site, free webinars just like this, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channels. We pump out new content on there quarterly. Uh, and of course, stay on support with us. We'll grant you two for pre free professional exam codes per year, access to our tech support, and application entering, engineering mentoring sessions, and, and much more here. We've expanded since uh, since I've been here. Uh, we just acquired a Linex up in the upper Midwest uh, just this year, really to bring you the best support we can as possible. If you need a quick answer, don't feel feel free to reach out to our tech support. Uh, if you need more time for in-depth uh, analysis, learn something new, you're working on a specific project, schedule time with an application engineer like myself or Bruce in your local area, or you can jump across time zones and schedule a virtual meeting directly on our calendar with any application engineer company-wide for more support. Uh, so, you know, if I can't answer your specific question, you, you bet I know someone here who does. Now, <clears throat> before we get started, let's start with a poll regarding flattened surface, because this is going to be a webinar on flattened surface command in SOLIDWORKS. So, let's go ahead and launch that poll. Which package of SOLIDWORKS do you need for surface flatten? Which, which package of SOLIDWORKS? Professional, premium, or standard to do surface flattening? Go ahead and check one of those boxes on the poll. All right, all right. All right, we got some responses coming in. So I'll round them up. Got 70%. Wait a couple more minute, minute here. Let some more people vote. Wow, we got a lot of folks. We got a lot of standard here. All right. Give it is it. almost a trick question, Jacob. It is almost a trick question, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, so, I'm I can't believe Let's how. Go I'm, ahead and see what our polls say, Jacob. All right, no problem. Let's go ahead and close that poll. Most of us here says standard. Well, it's kind of a trick question here because this is a premium only function. That's correct. Only This is a premium only function here. Uh, so 
what, what makes it a little strange is it's not an add-on. It's, it's actually a command bound under the surfacing capabilities, and it'll be grayed out if you don't have access to a premium license. That's correct. That's correct. All right. Uh, <clears throat> our story here to help us better understand all the buttons on this property manager that of course will be ungray to you if you have the premium applicate premium package uh, comes from my experience with the human power vehicle contest down at Temple University undergrad uh, we're going to show you many of the applications from this one surface flatten command do a deep dive into the selections inside here uh, that pertain to this Society of Automotive Engineers human power vehicle design now before I jump into before we jump into all of that, uh, let's send another poll. Uh, how do you see yourself using this command? What types of designs do you see yourself using flattened surface for? And folks, if you select other here, kindly type in the chat what that other application would be. <clears throat> this really helps us on future webinars and you know, we can make pretty models. We want to make sure that uh, it pertains to what you're working on, right? And you can you can put it in the questions as well. I've seen somebody already put something in the questions. That works as well. That works. All right. Oh, this is great. We got a lot of fabric design in here, coping, decaling, some great use cases. All right. So we've got a mix. We've, we've definitely got a great mix in here. Again, if you we got some others in here. If you don't mind sharing with us what that other application is, that really helps us and helps us help you. I remember when we were in the contest, we had some, we had some issues with some fiberglass, some composite layup. We were laying epoxy, and we cut the strips to the wrong flat size. And so we, we had to add a couple extras and put the epoxy on top. And we're gonna look at a few use cases in this this example here. Um, yeah, we've got somebody that said flattened polyamide tape, so it's mm -hmm. very similar to your cut pieces that you were doing for your layups. Oh, that's so cool when you miscut them because mm -hmm. you weren't using the flatten command at the oh, time. No, I didn't. I had premium. Didn't know, didn't know I could use all this stuff in here. I think we've got it. Let's, let's uh, go forward and show them what this is all about. All Jacob. right. Sounds good. I close this poll here. We had, I'm going to share the results with you. Uh, it looks like we had a lot for uh, other uh, stickers and decaling was a, was a pretty high percentage here. So we had, we had a good mix of stuff. We've got a good mix of use case applications, and we're going to jump into uh, we're going to jump into almost all of them here in these examples, uh, and we're going to look into all the property managers and why we would use them in certain scenarios. So let's jump right in. Let's jump right into our model here. So this is this is the model that we have in SolidWorks. And I'm going to start out with the frame for coping and tubing for pipe structures here. Uh, here's my weldments does a great job. I got a multi-body weldment part here. I got my cut list that's updated. Uh, one of the nice, nice features in weldments that I can get a cut list. And you know, most of the examples I've seen online, they don't have a tube that's pretty normal, right? It's not. It's not. It's actually not along a certain plane. I can't really use reuse some geometry in here. Uh, you can see we created this with a nice up to reference. So I got, you know, I, I got kind of some sharps on this fish mouth. It looks, it looks good. I mean, it's, it's got, it's got a good design, but it could be, could be better here. You know, this, this, we wanted to make this a little bit more manufactured. We've got a little bit too much sharps on the up to reference on this end and the other end here. So I'm going to want to isolate this. I'm going to expand my cut list here. And if I select this cut list member again, you can see it highlights in the graphics area. I can right mouse, mouse click on the body and I can insert this body into a whole new part. Now I've already done this already and the reason that I've done this is because I needed to do a little bit of cleanup. As we mentioned there's some sharps on the other ends. I need to make this look a little bit cleaner. How did I do that? 
Well, it was actually pretty simple. Let's sort of jump into how I created this cut, the, 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 the sweep cut here. I'm going to go ahead and edit this feature. And I'm going to show the hidden lines just to show you how we, I, I put this. And I just used the bottom, the bottom edge here and a, and a cut. You notice I didn't even use a, a sweep path sketch. I just used the edge that it's attached to. And in 2017, you know, and, and above, we can we can specify direction vector and use that edge. The axis is the temporary axis of this tube. You know, you can see it's, it's not orthogonal. It's not along any plane. Uh, but I'm able to to sketch along here uh, and create this cut just to clean up the sharps on that end there, just to see how how we did that. Now, now I want to use some surface flat. Let's go ahead and put the shaded with edges back on. I take a look at the front plane here. I'm going to look normal too. I can see that the front plane envelops this whole thing. Now there's a myriad of ways that I can get the sketch here, but I'm going to use, I'm going to make a new sketch on this front plane and use a new feature that came out in SOLIDWORKS 2020. It's great for capturing round geometry like this. And I personally made the video in our knowledge base article on silhouette entities. You can hit the drop down arrow underneath convert entities and select silhouette entities. It's just as easy as clicking on the solid body, hit the green check, and now I've traced around the entirety of this model. I'm going to draw a box, make the whole thing construction, and again, there's a lot of ways that we could create the plane that I'm, I'm creating here, but I just want a plane normal to this. So I'm going to stick a point right there on the midpoint, looks pretty good, rebuild this, and that's what the geometry I'm going to use to create a normal plane that cuts through this bar. I'm going to hit the drop down to reference geometry, new plane, simply select the point, select the line adjacent, and there we go. I got a nice plane, bisects my coat, my <coughs> my coat bar right there in the center. And that's the plane I'm going to use to make a simple index sketch. For this index sketch here, I'm just going to start with a simple line and I'm going to index it at 12 o'clock if I hover I just use the the top uh, the top line here um, I can I can I can simply use just just a simple line right through the center I'm going to index it at 12 o'clock waking up that center and rebuild uh, I could rebuild when I'm done here but I'm gonna I'm gonna cut through. I'm gonna use this to make a simple extruded cut. Now a lot of the videos I've seen online, they have index. They made a triangle or made a couple degrees of, of, of freedom in here. Whereas I'm just gonna use a simple line, and I'm gonna use thin feature to create the cut that I need. So I want this to go through all both. I'm just gonna make a small incision in this tube. Press thin feature. I'm gonna do a mid plane thin feature and make it about a thousandth of an inch at 0.25 millimeters both sides. Green check. And that makes my nice small slit through the, through the tube, which of course isn't at any you know, particular angle. We had to create a plane for that. And now I'm going to activate my Surfaces tab of my Command Manager, and there's where I see Surface Flatten. Surface Flatten. It's about the center of your Command Manager for Surface surfaces. With premium, it's ungray. I'm going to select this outer face, go to the next group box. We're always going to select these top two group boxes, and I can either select an edge or a vertex. In this case, I'm going to select the vertex, but I can hit the V key on my keyboard to filter out my vertices. It makes it easier for me to grab the vertex that I need. And this is going to allow me to make this stencil cut. Now, I know that there are a myriad of more automated processes for me to get the coping cut on here. But back when I was an undergrad, I didn't have access to all of that. So I really needed to create a flat stencil that I could use here. Uh, that A flat stencil that I could use around this cut. Right mouse click on this directly. Export to DXF. Print it out one to one. Wrap it around and trace it with my with my Sharpie so that I could get the cuts the way I want it. Now, when I put it back into the main frame here, uh, I just kind of eyeballed where it was for the weld gap to, to, to put the welds back in. So that's, that's, that's how you activate the, uh, use, use the surface flatten command to make a flattened surface for a coping cut. 
if we look at the, the seat here, I can use flattened surface on any portion of the fabric for this seat. But I'm going to focus in on the back end for this example. Let's open this up by itself. Alright. Of course, I have to manufacture this, so I need to know how I need to know the flat on this. I need to know how many I can cut. Uh, and also, I kind of want to know how uh, how we got this. And we uh, we named this split line here. We named this decal the lady here, Jenny, which you're going to see why we named her Jenny in a bit. Now, Bruce put this in. Bruce, how easy was it to place this uh, decal inside here? You know, that was the decal that came from our advanced class exercise where we learned how to trace lines around uh, sketch, you know, pictures that you bring in. And I love that image so much, so I, I used it for the back of the seat. And I wanted it to be a different color on the seat as well. Wow. Yeah, it, it looks really good. A good. Great placement. Just use a little trim surface on there. So we just have that whole face. That's that's great. All right. Well, let's... Uh... It, is, it is just a split line on there. So, you know, it's seen as two separate pieces of fabric. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, thanks for that background on, on how to put that in. Uh, now I need to go and cut this out. Right, so again, I'm going to click my surface flatten command on my surfaces tab, the command manager. Again, I'm going to select the similar similar selections here. I'm going to grab the face, then I'm going to grab the box that has the vertex or the edge, and I'm going to select this vertex down here. And I can see the preview that flattens it. But take a look, take a look at the command. Let's take a look at the feature manager design tree. I just have a surface flatten command. There's nothing else underneath it, right? If you pay attention, there's just, uh, well, there's nothing underneath it. It's just my surface flat. So how do I know how many of these I can cut? Or how, how do I manufacture this? Well, I gotta ask myself, do I need a sketch for this? Do I need any sketch entities? Let's edit this feature and look at additional entities. Additional entities helps answer the question, do I need any sketch it? geometry inside here and what can I do with that sketch geometry well I'm gonna select edges and as you can see the preview highlights in this nice outline of the edges that I've selected now I need the outline of this and I'm gonna need the sketch that envelops you know Jenny over here and so I'm just gonna draw a box drag a box select around all those edges and you can see them all highlight and the preview looks really nice. Green check. Do I need a sketch for that? Now I have a sketch for that. I got a sketch right under here. What can I do with that sketch now? Well, just like AutoCAD has blocks, we also have blocks in SolidWorks. Notice that I've highlighted the sketch. I just left click, highlighted the sketch. I'm going to go to my tools, blocks, and I'm going to save, and this is how you're going to remember this. I'm going to say tools, blocks, save blocks. And just like, and just like JLo, this is how you're going to remember, just like JLo, we have Jenny from the block. And I'm going to go ahead and save Jenny from the block here in my PDM system. Great. So now I've saved that block out. Now I have a table. I'm going to go File, New, and make a new, uh, uh, just a new part here. That's going to represent, you know, my table is uh, 75 inches by 100 inches. And I'm going to roll the fabric onto my table. So let's just draw a simple square or a simple rectangle here. That's going to represent that, just the, the table area. Right, so that's 75 inches by 100. By 100 inches. And then I'm going to go to Tools, Blocks, and insert that block. Tools, Blocks, Insert, and Browse for that file. Now i got to go find the file. So I'm going to go to my Vault. And what comes with premium, of course, is PDM standard. And what comes standard in PDM standard 
is my super duper simple search. Super duper simple search tool. I'm going to use my super duper simple search tool to search for Jenny from the block here. There she is. And I'm going to press open. And I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to rotate her about 64 degrees. And I'm going to use this to eyeball the nesting in here. Now, and just by clicking, I'm going to click to find out how many of these seat backs can I create you know, from the fabric that I've unrolled on my table. It looks like I can do about roughly about six in here. And just hit the green check when I'm done. Now, I, there's other there's other things I could do. There's a myriad of ways that I could even uh, put faces on here or extrude it and then right mouse click, export that out to DXF and use that to cut it with my water jet or laser cutter and cut it directly. All right. So again, additional entities. Do I need a sketch? And can I use that sketch for bounding box nesting? Absolutely. Now, earlier we were talking about we were talking about fairing design and how I had to lay carbon fiber epoxy of carbon fiber. I had to lay it up and then put the epoxy on top. And you know, I actually kind of mismeasured because I was kind of cutting as I went along. It would have been nice to use a flat pattern, you know. And back in undergrad, we had to put some stickers up in the front area too. Maybe I want a nice Temple University sticker on here. But we're also adjusting this for some aerodynamics. Let's 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 take a deeper dive into the into the fairing right here. Take a deeper dive into this fairing piece. Look at how it works. Now, underneath this surface fill, I got a nice front arc control. And I'm using the front arc control to really, really uh, change the aerodynamics of the front fairing of the nose cone here. You can see I just adjust this in instant 2D and in instant 3D. It updates and has my size. You can also see I have a nice little projected curve on here, which we're going to use in a, in a second. We're going to explain why I have this and what I'm going to use it for. But this is a projected curve on this curved surface right here. Right? Again, I'm going to use this front surface to put maybe a nice Temple University sticker or a Go Engineer sticker or some decals, something to put on the front fairing. Uh, and I'm going to need a flat pattern for it. So, where's my flatten button? Again, surfaces tab to command manager, right there, smack in the center, we got surface flatten. I'm going to select surface flatten, select my curved face that I have right here. Again, we'll go to the second selection, always need that edge or vertex, that vertex right there is going to do great. I want to hit the green check for right now, and it looks like I got my accuracy slider about a quarter right now. And just uh, pay attention to that. We're going to get back to that in a minute. So I'm going to hit OK. We always hit the first two selections on the surface flatten command. And I'm going to hide this, the solid body here with the tab key and use some options that I have. I want to see what kind of stretching. Let's look at the stretching and compression inside this. We can do that by simply right mouse clicking for more options. Right, right mouse click is always more options than SolidWorks. And one of the more face options that we have in Surface Flatten is this deformation plot. Deformation plot. So I'm going to select the deformation plot here. And it's going to give me the colors that I need. Right? This is what I'm really concerned with is uh, quanti just looking at the colors. Where do I have the amount of stretching? And if I change the size of this here, if I change, change the size of this front R control here, and we make a we make an adjustment to the value. Is that stretch in the flat pattern going to update as well? Simply left clicking on it. Yes, it does. And in the locations that we expect, right on the outsides, I see a lot of redness, a lot of stretching in this area. There's a lot of stretching on the bottom too. So I might have to stretch that sticker across more than I thought. You know, roughly seven percent at the most on those edges. And we have about a similar amount of compression here in the middle. Hmm. To better put this sticker on, I might need to make a small incision. An incision probably at the top is what I was thinking. So that's where that curve, that projected curve, I made a one inch curve uh, line from the front and projected that curve onto this, onto this curved face. And I'm going to reuse that projected curve by editing the feature. So you know what, i got to rip this. We're going to try to remove some of the stretching that's in there. 
with relief cuts. Relief cuts. So I'm going to select in the relief cuts box. I'm going to hover over and select the edge. You'll see that from the projected curve, and you'll see in the, in the preview, it's giving me this nice rip as if I cut this fabric to make it easier for me to stretch it over the front, front nose cone here. Hit the green check. And go ahead and click on the deformation plot. And I can see right away, green. It's relieved a lot of stress in a certain, in a, in a lot of stretch, excuse me, stretch in the outer areas here with a, with a less, a little bit less compression in this area. Now you may be wondering, look at that, there's a high value of stress right, stretch right here. Where is it? That's, that's my next question. Well, look, it's localized. It's localized in this top area on, in, an, in a symmetric part, in an asymmetric area. So, is this, is this a result I can use? Well, yeah. We just have to ignore this value because it's diverging. Just like in FEA, we have stress, stress divergence. When we don't just simulate something once and go with the value, we're going to increase the number of elements and number of nodes, and we're going to do it again and run it again, and then we're going to increase the number of nodes and elements, and we're going to run it again, or maybe we'll add a mesh control in a certain area and run it again. If the stress is con is converging to a value, then it's good. If it's diverging or accelerating away, uh, then we can probably chalk this up to divergence. What's a good way to test that? Sounds like a singular. It sounds like a singularity from FEA, huh, Jacob? It does sound a lot like a singularity in FEA. So a good way to to, to test that, just like in FEA, it, it has a lot of similar parallels to FEA, Bruce. Namely in the accuracy slider, right? I mean, we want to account for more curvature. We're going to increase the accuracy slider. But it's going to increase the amount of RAM that we have. But it's also a good indicator, and it's just very analogous to FEA, where we increase the number of nodes, right? Let's increase the mesh on here, which would increase the number of nodes that we have. You can see it's taken. There we go, as you can see in the preview here. Now I'm going to hit the green check. And we'll look at the stretch value and see if, is it in the same location? Is it asimilar? Is it accelerating? Right, I mean, we went from, we, we just made a sm small adjustment on that accuracy slider. And now we have an accelerated stretch, right, from 18 all the way to 27. Where? Well, like you said, Bruce, it looks like a singularity in a, in a small location. So if you see that, it's something to, to take a look at, right? We can, we can safely ignore that stretch value in that location due to divergence, right? Because the compression, well, the compression's staying relatively the same. That's really interesting, Jacob, that you also see the same similarities that you, you know, see from singularities in FEA that it shows up and, and our surface flatten, you know. Absolutely. Plots. So you have to learn to ignore those. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, we are, we are on our 30 minute mark, Jacob. Do you have something? We, we had a couple people that look like they're in an industry that, you know, might do something like uh, the, the Recaro, you know, seat. And that's maybe what they work in. It looks like, you know, 95% of the time is fabric. Oh, well, is there something more than the surface platen that, yeah, that SolidWorks has to offer? I think we have you covered there. Uh, you know, if you take a look, we have a we have a gold partner. That's a that's a great question. If this is what you're doing 95% of the time, uh, and you need more than just eyeballing that bounding box nesting, we have a gold partner with Exact Flat for SolidWorks. Uh, now you can contact them. Any one of those application engineers at their team can help you with more information on this tool. But you can see you can get more numbers for that bounding box nesting. Uh, some, some more automated nesting, some more values there for scrappage uh, to, to help you with some notations, custom labels. So if this is your bread and butter, this is what you're doing 95% of the time, this might be a tool plug-in right to SolidWorks that you might be interested in. Is this what you were looking for, uh, Bruce? Yeah, that's, a, that's what I didn't want you to miss. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All righty. So, uh, yeah, so we're here to, to provide you with the tools and expertise you need to, to ultimately get your products to, to market sooner. 
And um, if there's anything from this webinar that you'd like to see in more detail or you have additional questions, feel free to, to, to ask them right now. Or, uh, you know, again, you can always schedule time with us uh, to, to do a deeper dive into these tools. Um, but we, we want to hear from you. Yeah. And thanks for uh, attending you guys yeah. today. I, I hope you ha had a good lunch here and uh, hope you can join us on our next uh, webinar at Go Engineer.